we have the responsibility and privilege to care for widows in our congregation. So things that the Lord has laid um, on us to do. And it's, uh, it's a great thing. There's actually an overlap in our ministries with one particular widow right. who's been a great blessing to you. Why don't you tell them about that? Yeah, so Martha, uh, she came to our church not a few years after I got there. And she's became a huge blessing, uh, just was uh, kind and supportive. And, uh, and then as her health declined, she moved to your town, which is about you know, uh, 30, 40 miles south of where I live, to go into assisted living there. And uh, her, nep her nephew, and she, that's her family who took care of her, so that's what made her go down there and connected, connected at your church in that way. And so, uh, but I, I just, the, the widows in our church and the, the opportunity to care for widows has been such a, a tremendous gift. As I reflect back on my pastoral ministry, the thing that has brought me so much joy is getting to care for these folks. And I bring that up because I think so many pastors either look at the elderly or, or widows in particular, but even the elderly in the church and see a, a burden or people who just don't want to change or whatever it is. And obviously that's the case in some ways. But I just want to urge pastors that uh, caring for widows, one, is, is one of the few places clearly commanded in the New Testament to do. There's a special group that's supposed to be cared for, and why? Because of the, the unique needs they have. But there's a lot of joy for the pastor in caring for widows. Have you found that? So on the way this morning, driving here this morning, I made a phone call to a widow, and uh, just an encouraging 10-minute conversation. And my goal in calling her was to check on her, to see if she was doing okay, and um, check in on the loneliness that she might be facing. Um, but that was as spiritually enriching for me as it could have been for her, and uh, what a blessing. And that lady specifically, uh, I celebrated 10 years at, uh, at the church this summer, and she hasn't been out of her house this year very much at all, um, but took the opportunity to come on that Sunday uh, to celebrate the 10th anniversary of my being there at the church. Yeah. And it's a great sacrifice, and in some ways you can see risk in that. Um, but ministry to her and to others, but I use her as an example, uh, ministry to her is a great blessing to me. Yeah, it's part of what I'm required to do. But And I think it's important for us to realize with widows, most of the time, that's a big step for her to do that because so often loneliness is the greatest snare for widows and they often are not fighting for our time as a pastor like other people are. So it's easy for a pastor to forget about them unintentionally. Uh, it's It's easier to just, you know, meet up with somebody at a coffee shop or whatever, but to go to a widow's home and sit there and spend time with, with them, widows and widowers, by the way, men, I mean, men and women. And, and I think that that's what we have to be extra mindful of, making sure we, they don't get overlooked, that our busyness in ministry and the people demanding our time uh, don't squeeze out the time that we need to be giving to this specific group of people that the New Testament says we're commanded to care for, not just us, but the church and having to equip and train our churches to do that work. Yeah, to that end, do you have a have you used a specific plan to make sure that you're staying in touch with each widow, or do you have a certain regimented plan that you've used over the years? Yeah, so the the system that we talk about with and praying for the flock is is similar in that uh, we have a system to where I'm praying for every member each month. But when I get to widows, they are specifically marked on that list, so I know who the widows are. So I am mindful to ask the question, when was the last time I talked to them? When was the last time I saw them? When was the last time I went to their home? Some of them come to church and I can see them, but especially those who are shut in, those that can't get out. Um, I, I've, I've made trips to your town because I just want to come see Martha. And it's interesting, she, she's always grateful to see me because she doesn't expect me to drive an hour to come see her, which as you know, makes me want to go see Martha that much more. And, and that I think captures well just the blessing of this ministry of pastors will embrace it. Yeah, it's a vital aspect of our ministry, and uh, it might go unnoticed. If we, uh, if we don't fulfill it, the vast majority of folks may not know about it, but it's something we're... It oftentimes goes overlooked. I think you have to settle with oftentimes it's going to be you and that widow and God that knows you went there. And pastors need to, to realize this is, that, that that's part of the work, but, but the right people know. That's right.